What's up? It's Connor. Somehow I am still alive. Or who knows, maybe I'm actually dead from all the time I've spent at Walmart. Seriously, a job is a pain in the ass, but a lot of jobs are. <laughs> so, you may have noticed I came back to YouTube in 2024. I had been planning on doing some YouTube videos again for quite some time, but I ended up getting like really busy, and then when I wasn't, I just didn't want to work, because most normal people don't want to go to work and then do more work, and then when they get to their day off, like, you know, doing even more work, it's just not really, uh, not really that into the idea. Um, so, I, I preferred just relaxing whenever I was free, rather than being stuck doing more work. So, the thing about this channel is, I started it back around 2012, and the original intention was to show off fan games I was making. I kind of moved away from that over time, because I was making them less and less, and I uh, ended up not really making a whole lot of games. Eventually I started making more like visual novels, but lately I haven't really had a whole lot of time for that, even though they're like, one of the easier kind of games to make, and that's why I was making them. But uh, I ended up going to YouTube for a bit, and after uh, after a little while, I started uh, making other kinds of content with uh, my voice. Uh, I remember the first videos I had with my voice in them were some like haunted gaming videos where I just like wrote down some creepy pastas. They weren't really that great or anything, and then like I narrated them, and then put the audio over some game footage. At around that time, I was kind of into uh, Some Ordinary Gamers Haunted Gaming series, which he doesn't really do anymore, but uh, well. And I also got into like uh, Super Mario 64 bloopers, and then Let's Plays were something I had been wanting to do. I had discussed it with like a real life friend beforehand, but he said it was hard to imagine someone like me, who doesn't really talk a whole lot, do something like that. Um, being in front of like a microphone made it much easier, but it was hard to stay consistent with Let's Plays and stuff, because like I did a little bit in 2013, did my Herb Sims in the City Let's Play in 2014, and I haven't really done a whole lot of Let's Play type stuff since then. I have tried to come back to it, but it didn't really work out. Like I've thought about like starting a channel with like my brother where we just play different games together. Uh, I'd probably need, like, a capture card for the games we'd want to play. <laughs> but, uh, I think we could probably come up with some interesting stuff, but we'd have to, like, set... S we'd have to set aside some time in our lives to actually, like, focus on that kind of stuff. And, you know, we both have stuff that we want to do in our personal lives, so uh, we, we don't really have the time to make that kind of commitment. And uh, Super Mario 64 bloopers were something else I watched around that time. I got really into SMG4. I think his golden years were 2012-2014. Kind of quit watching him for a while around 2018 or so. But after getting a job a couple of years ago, I kind of started watching his stuff again. I still think his older stuff's better, but like I don't really think his newer stuff's that bad. If you don't like it, that's fine. Like you know, it's not for everybody. Anyways, so I did that for a bit, and I kind of came up with some storylines, had some other friends that did some Super Mario 64 stuff, and, you know, we kind of had, like, plot points and elements that would go on in each of our stuff, but uh, none of us actually finished anything. Like, uh, myself and Captain Shkabula, we finished what we considered the first season of our Super Mario 64 bloopers. Kind of stopped somewhere in the second. And I had plans for more stuff that I wanted to do, but I never got around to it. And, like, I kind of, like, canceled the Super Mario 64 stuff more than once. I'm like, okay, I don't want to do it anymore. I'm done. Then I came back, and then I'm like, I don't want to do it anymore. I'm done. And then I came back again. <laughs> and it's kind of up in the air whether or not I'll actually finish that stuff. Eventually, I ended up doing game reviews, which was something I wanted to do since, like, 2013, when I got into Peanut Butter Gamer and JonTron, everybody from Normal Boots. Well, okay, maybe not everybody, but, like, I kind of wanted to make that kind of YouTube content. Made a little intro that I wanted to use, but I never ended up using. It took me a couple of years to actually start making that kind of video, and it was watching Balrog that actually got me interested in getting started for real, so I 
got around to actually doing it. And I actually had some videos around 2015 to 16 that got a decent amount of views, which was pretty surprising for me. Especially after I got into, like, uh, covering Ace Attorney news. I, I wasn't really intending to <laughs> report on anything Ace Attorney related, but uh, I made a video about Ace Attorney 6, and then a few months later, I'm just like, let's just do a news roundup, and then, like, and then I just kept making stuff whenever new news came out about Ace Attorney 6, which became known as Spirit of Justice in the West. And I eventually did news related to Dag Yacht and Simon, Dag Yacht and Simon 2, or The Great Ace Attorney, until there was, like, nothing left to cover. And, like, yeah, I even, I even went over some stuff uh, from after the 3DS era, like the rumors about compilations for Ace Attorney. We, we eventually got them all. <laughs> And, you know, at one point I even did a video about the lack of Ace Attorney news, because we weren't hearing anything. <laughs> but it was around when the great Ace Attorney finally got localized that I stopped actually making the news videos. But this kind of video, like, you know, I kind of like this kind of video, so I kept at it for a while. I was somewhat consistent, but I was forced to take breaks for various reasons. I remember in 2014, like, I would do, like, three videos a week for the summer. For, and they were all like different types of videos, different styles, about what you'd expect from a kid on YouTube. But uh, 2017, it was more my more modern stuff where I was like talking over footage, doing like game reviews and whatever. And I tried to do the three videos a week thing again, um, but uh, some family members were being toxic around that time. So I had to take a break and I, I actually got like real, real depressed. So I wasn't really making anything new for a while, and then I then I returned, and then over the next few years I kept making videos. So different things about my style would end up changing. And around 2019 was when <laughs> Scott the Waz really started influencing my stuff. So if you've watched my 2019 to 2020 reviews and stuff, you'll definitely notice if you've watched Scott the Waz before, and. Uh, I got, I got pretty consistent for a little while because, like, there was a point in, like, 2019 and 2020 where I'd do, like, a few scripted videos a week and then take a break. <laughs> and uh, there were, like, at least uh, five scripted videos I did in 2020 that I worked on around the same time. I even have, like, some scripts for other videos that I started around that time and... I didn't finish then, got around to later. I got some stuff that I started working on after I kind of stopped doing YouTube for a little while. <laughs> but, you know, around the end of 2020, I, you know, didn't really do much after that. I had a, a, I had a few videos come out in 2021, which included some Ace Attorney related stuff and an April Fool's video, but at, in the middle of 2021, I kind of just stop making stuff like I was just not really feeling it because you know I've been at it for a while and I just felt kind of burned out from it because you know at first I was making these videos because they were what I wanted to make but like I kept trying to keep with a schedule and everything and that kind of kind of hurt me a bit because after a little bit I felt like I was making these videos because I felt like I had to and not because I wanted to which is uh, interesting because so far I have not made a single cent off of any of my videos. Like, I am not good enough to get all these thousands of views and whatnot on my sh**. <laughs> yeah. I ended up just not doing YouTube and trying to focus on my personal life and, you know, I was trying to get a job, like a real job, because, you know, I had struggled with that and nobody wanted to hear anything from me, like, so uh, I tried to take it a bit more seriously and honestly, I didn't have the greatest luck. Most of the time, I heard anything back, like, you know, I might I might have gotten an interview or something, but <laughs> I usually didn't hear anything back from any of the places I applied to. And, you know, all I could really do was just hang out at home, play video games until somebody actually wanted me. Because <laughs> none of the applications I was filling out were really doing anything. 
it, it really didn't help that uh, my family was being pretty toxic around that time. I actually ended up uh, hiding in my room a lot at the end of the night. Because, like, I usually just went to this one room that we had a big TV in. Didn't have a TV in my room because one of my cats knocked it over. <laughs> So we had to use that other TV, and I'd hook my laptop up to it, you know, this was way before the Steam Deck, or <laughs> and I'd play with a controller on, like, various games, and so it was how I liked doing it. And, you know, I was able to do that for a while until certain family members just started being, like, really toxic towards me about me being unemployed. You know, I was, I was struggling. Like, you know, it's not like I wasn't trying at all, not like I wasn't doing anything, because I, I was. But, you know, some people just don't understand because, like, they don't see the immediate results. They think you're not trying, which is really stupid. And, you know, at the very least, uh, one of my family members eventually realized that it wasn't, I wasn't trying. It's just the employers weren't giving me the time of day. Like, they weren't talking to me. Most of them weren't. It, it's ridiculous. They, they say, nobody wants to work. But then you fill out the applications, and nobody wants to freaking hire you. So, don't say nobody wants to work. Because, if you do, you don't know what the f*** you're talking about. <laughs> well, actually, technically, nobody wants to work. But, you know. But what I mean is, people want to work for the paycheck and, you know, make money. I probably shouldn't even have to explain that, but I'm doing it anyways. I don't know, maybe you just want to hear the sound of my stupid voice. <laughs> But yeah, it just wasn't working out. I remember summer 2021, I managed to get a part-time job, which uh, I got through my sisters. If it weren't for them, I probably wouldn't have gotten it. And basically, I just went and loaded ice cream trucks for a couple of hours. It was nice have, not having to deal with like uh, the idiots I deal with in retail nearly every day. But, uh, you know... It, I wasn't there for much time, I didn't get paid a whole lot, but it was nice. Eventually, uh, he kind of, eventually the boss just had me, <laughs> eventually the boss stopped having me come in, so I had to go look for another job, and you know, I was having a lot of trouble with that, because still, nobody wanted to hire me. Like, one of the jobs I applied to near the beginning of that year was Lowe's. I managed to get an interview, I show up, talk to you for a bit, and then that was it. I go home and go on with the rest of my year, not hearing a peep out of them, until I get hired by Walmart. Freaking ridiculous. They wait until another job, they wait until another company has me to get back to me. It's so f***ing stupid. Around that time when I applied to Walmart, I tried uh, working at a, like a taco restaurant. And that only went through. That only went for a day. They never figured. They never figured out my schedule or anything. So I, I just, I just said screw it. And you know, Walmart had called me around that time. So I'm just like, I, I'm just gonna call Walmart back and see if they'll still let me come in. And that's how I became a slave for Walmart. <laughs> but yeah, I just didn't want to make a whole lot of videos while I was stuck doing my Walmart job because you know work and work like I, I don't want to do that like you know during some breaks maybe but like but I'd have to be like energized and motivated for that and these days I'm not very energized I don't get a lot of sleep <laughs> coming back to YouTube uh, this year kind of hasn't helped because uh, it's made me lose a bit of sleep <laughs> um, so anyways the main reason I came back was because I actually missed making videos I've been missing it for a while and you know when I watch uh, an old video of mine hear my voice like it made me kind of want to go back to doing it so like I'd slowly work on scripts when I could but for the most part for a while that was it I wouldn't really work on any other videos and eventually I realized if I was going to come back anytime soon I was just gonna have to make the content that was easier to make which would be my low effort mostly unscripted content and you know I can make decent stuff without a script, but uh, kinds of videos I want to make, uh, which is the scripted stuff, those can be kind of a pain, because like, writing the scripts, that part's fine, but like, when it comes to like, recording it, I do fail a lot, and I always dread editing the audio, 
That part's always a pain. I even changed how I <laughs> edited the audio for my unscripted videos this year, where I'd like edit the audio first, and then I would drag it into the uh, the program I'm using now. Because like before 2020 was over, I was actually using Adobe Premiere. Because like when I, when I first got into this, like I, I used like Windows Movie Maker, and then I used a combination of Windows Movie Maker and Adobe Premiere 2.0 before moving fully to Adobe Premiere 2.0. And then a friend gave me a link to a full version of Adobe Premiere Pro 6. And, you know, I bought it and, you know, it had more features, worked a lot better, supported a lot more, <laughs> supported a lot more file formats. I liked using it. And then uh, it worked for a little while. And then Adobe decides to be douchebags and revoke my license. It was one of those older versions, so I assumed that meant I would get to keep it. and Because <laughs> it wasn't one of those subscription ones. But no, Adobe decided to be douchebags anyways and take the license away from me. So I f didn't feel bad at all pirating it after that. And uh, uh, But unfortunately, I had issues with the program that came up after I pirated it. So... I knew I was going to have to figure out what I was going to use next. Uh, I tried using like DaVinci Resolve, but that like kept crashing on me. And there was another another software I used for a little bit, I think. And then I, I, I eventually I eventually moved to HitFilm Express. Uh, at first, I had trouble with HitFilm, but uh, I eventually got it to work. But uh, yeah. So I made the videos for a little while, then I stopped, then I only made, like, update videos for the next couple of years, and, you know, I had to say something when my appendix almost killed me. <laughs> yeah, and then, you know, I had some big stuff happen uh, this year, like, uh, my brother got married and he moved out, which was uh, interesting, and... <laughs> Actually, the weekend he got married, I was actually working on uh, one of my videos. It was my uh, Another Code recollection video. Like, I had already done, like, the audio, gotten that taken care of. I was just, like, editing the video part. <laughs> Which, uh, it's interesting how I was uh, trying to work on that during that weekend with how little time I had. Because uh, when I was working on it, I had to, like, clean the house for my uncles that were coming over and <laughs> and then like I had the rehearsal that night so I was only able to work on it for like less than an hour then I did like what I could when I got home and yeah I, I managed to finish it over the weekend like the the day of my the day of the wedding I just ended up play gaming playing like Atelier Esca and Logi <laughs> But yeah, I, I came back, started making a lot of unscripted videos, because I just wanted to make videos again. And I just did stuff that I thought I could make. And I even did something a little new <laughs> that really fit my style, which was my top 10 facts videos, where I start out with some true facts, and then I move to some more obvious ones, before completely making things up. <laughs> And honestly, though, when I was uh, working on some of them, I just thought, some of these facts, I'm not sure how accurate they are. And then I'm like, you know, I'm eventually just going to say facts that are just completely made up. So is it going to matter if some of them aren't entirely accurate when the videos are made for entertainment purposes? <laughs> and, and, and see what people think to, uh, about the made up facts. <laughs> but... Yeah, so that's uh, I, I think I've gone on for <laughs> I've gone on for quite a while, but yeah, I, I pretty much made it clear why I came back, and you know I managed to stay pretty consistent uploading these videos pretty much every week from the summer up through a bit into the fall. But once again, I'm getting tired of making videos. I want to take a break. And honestly, though, when it came to those videos, I actually prepared a lot of them ahead of time, so... <laughs> I had, like, a backlog of several weeks, and then, like, every weekend I'd work on, like, one or two videos for a while, just to keep the backlog going. <laughs> but, you know, I just started to get tired of trying to keep the backlog up, so I decided to just slow down and let the videos just keep going up until there isn't any left 
and now I'm just gonna take a break and figure out what to do with my channel after that because there's there's still more stuff I want to do because like there's even some stuff that I've recorded for this year that I never actually put out so those might be going up sometime next year I just have to get around to throwing them together I just I just want a break so I can focus more on my personal life again uh, I don't intend to leave YouTube completely forever. Like, you know, I have thought about, like, doing videos like, uh, like I play a game, then talk about the video, uh, talk about the game, like, right after I finish it. It would be, like, an unscripted video. Um, I wouldn't have, like, a consistent schedule like that. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to do it, but it's something I thought about. But uh, as for my scripted videos, like I had an issue filming some of the live action footage I wanted to do. So I'm still thinking about how I want to uh, do those videos before I put them out. Because I've actually recorded most of the audio for those. I just uh, don't know how they're going to be presented yet. There's still some things i got to figure out. But all I know for certain is that I'm taking a break because... I'm a freaking zombie stuck at Walmart or something. I don't know. I didn't think of anything interesting to say, so I'm just going to end it here.